Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Technical Pod Podi. In this video, I'm going to share all the new flow features that are now available with Summer 21 release and how we can take advantage of these awesome features. So the first feature that we'll be talking today, how we can use the debug tool to debug a record triggered flow. So basically what is happening after the summer 21 release, we'll be able to debug any record triggered flow using the native flow debug tool. And this is going to be a, this is a huge improvement. So basically what we need to do, we just need to select the record and execute the flow in the debug mode. Now, since debugging a flow means it's executing in a rollback mode, so no changes will be saved in the actual record. So we'll see a demo right now. We explain this feature, what there will be a use case that I'll be implementing. The use case is a very basic and simple one. So basically I'll be creating a record triggered flow on the account object. And if the annual revenue of the account is greater than equals to 1 million, then I want to mark that account as a hot account. Or if it is less than 1 million, then I want to make that account as a cold account. To do that, I have already created one uh, pick list variable on the account objects called type and definitely it's having two values which is hot and cold. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create the record triggered flow and then I will debug that flow. So let's go ahead and create that uh, flow. So we'll click on the new flow. We'll choose record triggered flow. Next, we'll choose free form. Now here we'll choose account and for the time being we'll just select let's none. So it means like every time the account, I mean, it doesn't matter what is the condition, every time this flow will run. Though this is not a best practice, we should always put a condition, but just for this demo purpose, I'm putting none. And let's make this uh, every time a record is created and updated and before the record is flow. So it's a before, uh, triggered flow. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to create a decision and it's basically annual revenue check. So it's hot. The logic of hot is record annual revenue is greater than equals 1 million and old is when the annual revenue is less than 1 million. So that's my condition. Based on that, what I'm doing, I'm going to update the account uh, accounts type. So here, what I'm doing is that, I don't want to do, it's a before trigger, so just an assignment. Make account hot, which is record.type. This is my uh, custom variable, and I want to make this as hot. And, Another assignment, which is make account cold. Here, the records and the type, which is basically the account type, I'm marking this as cold. So very basic flow. I'm just connecting both the uh, assignment and let me save this flow now. On flow, save, and let's activate. Now, I want to debug this flow. The way I can do the debug, I can click on this debug button here, and I need to select a account. So for the timing, let me select Burlington, and this is my account, and this account is having the annual revenue is two million. So if I run now, I can see this is my execution uh, detail, this is my debug details. And you see here, this line is highlighted, this path is highlighted. 
definitely the revenue is greater than 1 million that's why we are making that account hot but again this is a this is a debug so you see this line roll back so it means everything is rolled back nothing is getting saved in the actual record right now let me make this uh, less than 1 million let me 500 and what i'm going to do i'm going to run the same flow again debug again and with the same uh, account and run but if you see here this time this path the cold path is getting highlighted so this is the way you can debug a flow with the native debug uh, tool from the flow so the next feature that we are going to talk today is like the check governor limit consumption and the transaction boundaries so what this feature is telling is that when you are running a flow there can be a situation like where, where, where your flow becomes slow uh, it's not optimized and you don't know what is going on so with the debug and with the summer 21 release from the debug window you can find out what is a governor limit consumption and what are the transaction boundaries so this is a very helpful feature to understand what are the different ways you can make your flow optimized by following the best practices so let's see an example now okay now we'll enhance the previous uh, flow a little bit so what we are going to do we are going to add a element here which is basically fetching all the opportunities of a hot account so what we are going to do we are going to create an element which is basically the get records and it's basically uh, get all opportunities here we are trying to fetch all the opportunities here and the logic will be id uh, not the id account id equals to record dot id and we want to store all the record we want to fetch all the record so that's our new flow save as save and activate and this time we are going to do the debug again with the same account and run we have already seen this right now what we can do if you want to check the governor limit consumption and the transaction boundaries we need to click on this gear icon and select this to check boxes the moment you select that and debug again and run what we will see Uh, what we are seeing is that it's currently cold, so there is no there is no uh, DML, right? But let's make my account revenue greater than one million, and debug this flow again. If I do that, what I can see here, this is my get records, and here we can see this is my governor limit consumption. So my SQL query out of 100, I've consumed one SQL query. And in, in terms of rows out of like, you know, uh, 50K rows, I have uh, fetched two rows already. So this is a very good feature to understand what is going on, which is making your flow a little slow. And what are the different ways you can optimize your flow to make it faster and also following the best practices okay so the third feature that we'll be talking today is like the is changed this is operator that we are all familiar with at least like you know the people who are dealing with salesforce for a long time or even new right we probably know like there is a feature called there is operator called is change it was not available in flow and due to that we need to do so many you know logic here logic to understand whether the whether a particular value actually changed now with summer 21 release this each change operator is available in the record trigger flow and this is going to help us a lot in terms of making our flow a lot simpler so let's see an example now okay to the same flow that we have created just a few minutes back you remember when we started creating that flow here in the logic we have already mentioned like you know let this flow run every time which I already told you, right? This is not a correct way of implementation because we don't want to run a flow if it is really not needed. So if we see uh, this one, everything is dependent on whether the annual revenue is changed or not. So what we can do here, we can put a condition here, which is if my annual revenue
annual revenue you see this one is changed if my annual revenue is changed that is true right and if my annual revenue is null false so what i am doing here is basically if my annual revenue has changed actually i don't need this one this is good enough if my annual revenue is changed then only you want to execute this flow so before that uh, this is changed operator was not there so what we need to do we need to uh, do a logic like what is the previous value of this is annual revenue and is it the same as the new value if not then we take the action right but uh, with summer 21 and uh, with the introduction of this operator our flow becomes a lot simpler so you should definitely use that is changed if your use case demands that so this is my favorite feature from summer 21 with, with in terms of flow feature right um, so what this feature is basically telling we can now sort a collection by using this new feature basically when whenever we are creating a collection variable we can sort the collection variable either in ascending or in descending order by using this one with using this collection sort at the same time we can select the field uh, which should be used to do the sorting so let's see an example now this is a get all opportunities what is doing it's basically creating a collection variable now what we can do we can take advantage of this collection sort to sort all the opportunities based on something so let's see how we can take the advantage of this one so we'll see, we'll drag collection sort and then we'll select solve all opportunities based on created debt so the collection variable name is this one and we want to sort based on created date and let's say let's do a descending and then done and then collect and then connect this uh, this to node so basically this is the way how you can use this collection sort to sort a collection variable and also select the field through which you want or select the field which should be used in sorting and in the sort order you can put you can select either ascending and descending this is a really powerful feature and this is going to make a lot of complex flow a lot simpler okay let's move to the next one so the feature that i'm going to talk today or talk now is basically a beta feature so it's not ga but with the summer 21 release with this you know with the help of fields it's basically a section in the flow builder you can include all the record fields directly in the flow screen again this is a beta in summer 21. So let's see an example. I will create a new flow. This time it will be a screen flow. And let's say we'll start with a screen where we are fetching the account name. So let me give this a name here, screen one and a text here, which is basically a account name. Uh, let's say put a required based on that i will fetch the account fetch account where it will be an account that i'm going to fetch and the logic is name starts with account name and let me select only the first record so let me connect this to dot and then when the account is found i want to uh, display all the account information so this is the screen where i will display all the account information previously before summer 21 we need to you know drag and off find out like you know which field we want to do let's say if you want to print the account name what we have to do is basically text here and then give like this is account name and then the account name underscore one and then in the default value choose like you know fetch account dot name then this will come right uh and then uh, account name will be displayed this is how we used to do today but with summer 21 we don't need to do that 
there is a section called fields you click that you select from which record you want to fetch the field so i want to fetch the field from the account which i've recently fetched and then what i can do i can just drag and drop the fields which i want to display on the screen it's super easy i don't need to worry about anything so if it is like you know uh, uh, if it is a different you know uh, what is called uh, formula field it will be displayed so i don't need to worry about the data type as well like if you see here this is a text 255 this is a long text this is a date so all different types of all different data type fields i can drag and drop here and i don't need to worry about like you know whether should i uh, select the date field uh, date input or should i select the you know text input so it's it's very easy but again remember in summer 21 this is in beta release okay with that we'll move to the next one this is another feature and it's very i'm a big fan of this feature it's all about creating multi-column screens in the flow builder it was beta in the last release but salesforce is making it ga in this release now, i have a detailed video about how you can create multi-column screens in the flow builder uh, i am going to put the link uh, in the description of this video you can go ahead and you can go and check that out uh, but let's see the example here Coming back to the previous flow in the screen here, let me get rid of all this one here. I'll show you how we can create the multi-column screen in the flow. So in the component, search for section, drag it here, and then you can create multiple section. You can create three, you can four, you can create maximum four section. So for this demo, let me create two section and I can give a different width. Like I can give this as eight and this is four. So this entire space is basically 12 and you are giving either six, either half width, like six, six of 12 and six of 12. And then you can, I mean, this is a way you can create multi, multi select, multi columns screen in the flow and then you can drag and drop in each section like I'm doing now. Okay, so that's the way you can create multi-column screen in the flow. So let's take the next one. Next one is very important. Every time when your flow fails, you get an email and then you need to click on that email to go through the flow and find out what's going wrong. But right now, you don't need to do that. From your setup, you can find all your paused and failed flows. So I'll show you the place where you can find all these details. So let's see that. To find all your paused and failed flows, you need to go to your setup and search for flows in the quick find and click on this paused and failed flow interviews. This is a place where you will find all your paused and failed flows interviews. This is a very easy way to get that. With that, we come to an end. If you like this video, please share the share and hit the like icon and also please subscribe to my blog and channel. The description and the link is given here to get update about all my upcoming videos. Till then, thank you and enjoy and explore Summer 21. Summer 21 is full of new features from Salesforce.